So Matt Mullen, he's here in the States, I believe. He has our second to last question. He asks, do you think it's a good strategy for those of us with bad joints, quote unquote knees, to reduce, reduce our mileage and increase our speed? I'm marathon training on only two days a week right now, running a pace that keeps my heart rate over 165. So I do know it's high quality work and then resting hard for my joints. My friends say I'm doing it wrong. Jeff, is, is Matt doing it wrong? Uh, I have to say that, that uh, Matt is probably doing it wrong. Um, yeah. First, let me, let me start out by answering the question of whether running um, injures your joints or hurts your knees or is bad for your knees. Um, that's probably one of the most common questions that I get as, from beginner runners. And unfortunately, um, uh, the New York Times doesn't do us any favors when they, uh, when they look at research studies that, and, and don't look at them correctly. But um, I'm basically referencing the fact that New York Times put out an article, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe it was longer than that, about a study that showed that running uh, hurts your knees. But they really just did a poor job of actually analyzing the study. I don't know if they just looked at the abstract or if the author just doesn't know how to read a, a proper study. Um, but in any case, it's been pretty much proven uh, through other, through really, through strong research studies um, that running has, it won't cause knee damage. Um, there is the possibility that runners will get knee problems, um, but that has to do with their own individual biomechanics um, and their own individual problems, just like any runner can develop a stress fracture or get Achilles tendonitis. Um, it's, it's completely unique to the individual. Um, running in general does not cause knee problems. Um, so let me first get that out of the way, so to, to let everybody know that there's no fear uh, in, in getting knee injuries beyond any other injury that you would normally get. Um, as, a, as to whether running harder is going to be uh, better or worse for the joints, um, personally, I think it's going to be harder because you're putting much more stress. The impact forces are much greater when you're running faster, um, and it's probably not hard to visualize that the faster you run, the more, uh, more uh, impact you're going to be creating with the ground. Um, and to be honest with you, the best way to, to lessen that impact would be to run nice and easy. Uh, focus on having good form, a higher cadence, um, and running on softer surfaces, whether it be grass or gravel, those types of things, something where it's taking the impact off um, and doing it more consistently. So in, if you're training for a marathon uh, on two days a week, uh, I would assume that both of those runs have to be pretty uh, high volume as well, um, at least I would think. And so what would be better for your joints is to spread out that uh, mileage over the week. So uh, I guess if, if you're trying to run 20 or 30 miles a week, um, it's better to spread that out over four or maybe even five runs um, and to start and to do less mileage uh, during those running days than to do to basically wreck your knee trying mm -hmm. to run hard, trying to run long, and then spending five days trying to recover um, is going to be worse than doing three to four miles, um, running easy, doing less damage to the knee, um, you know, treating it with therapy, all that kind of stuff, and then uh, doing a run the next day. Those types. Of, not only is that going to help your training more in terms of preparing for the marathon, that's going to be better. Uh, but I personally think that it's going to help your joints more. So that's probably the approach I would take. Got it. And it it goes back to. I know this is one of your your core uh, tenets is you can never by increasing your the number of days per week that you work out. Mm -hmm. um, I know you've always said you can never run too slowly Absolutely. on easy days. Mm -hmm. But you can run too fast on on hard days and uh, max two days a week. It sounds like he's pushing it way too hard to even have an easy day. Right, exactly. And so the reason that is is that for for easy days, when you again uh, one of the major uh, major contributors to getting better and to getting faster is to develop your aerobic system. And research has shown that. Your aerobic system, you, you develop your aerobic system most by running between 65 and 75% of your 5K pace. So for most people, that's going to be about two minutes slower than, than your 5K race pace. Um, that's where kind of the optimal aerobic development happens when running easy. Um, any faster than that, so any faster than 75% of your 5K pace, so between 75% and whatever higher, there, there really, there very isn't, there isn't a lot of aerobic development going on. So, basically, what's happening for somebody like Matt or anybody that's running their easy days too fast, 
who are, who, who are thinking like, okay, this is an easy day, I'm going to run it faster and that's going to be better for me, uh, it's actually worse because now instead of developing a aerobic system, you're probably what in what we call a gray zone, which is this area where you're not really developing your aerobic system, but then you're not running fast enough for it to be a hard workout. So you're not running at threshold pace or you're not running at VO2 max anaerobic pace. You're kind of in this gray zone where you're not slow enough to be aerobic, not fast enough to actually do any, uh, to be helpful. And so you're kind of just getting nothing out of the run except for being more tired, more stress to your joints, more stress to your muscles, that kind of thing. So you're exactly right with that, uh, with that analogy. Yeah, that's in, that's in complete contrast to, I grew up playing sports my whole life, and, and I, wasn't, I wasn't on the track team or cross-country team, but every practice was supposed to, you were supposed to go at 110%. Absolutely, and that, that's why running is sometimes the hardest sport for people to transition to as they get older, because it's so different than mm -hmm. any other sport. Even in swimming and cycling, which are endurance sports, um, and, I, and I, I don't claim to know a lot about them, so I could be completely off here, but... In those sports, you can go roughly as hard as you can, or, or get away with going as hard as you can more often, because there's such a there's less risk of injury um, in those types of sports. Not that you can't get hurt, but there's much much less. There's much less impact. Um, but you're right. When you play football, when you play baseball, or soccer, or whatever whatever other sport you play, you're always taught you know 100% effort all the time. And I know when I started in high school, uh, like my first run of sophomore year in high school, I did the same thing. Like my coach would say, oh, go do three miles easy. And I ran it as hard as I could. And my dad was, you know, right behind me, you know, oh, you're going for a run today. You're going to run as hard as you can. And I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. And I would run as hard as I could. Um, and, and boy, is that a recipe for disaster. Um, and I know that's an extreme. And I know people aren't running as hard as they can. But faster is not always better. And, and that is unbelievably hard. To be honest, I ran four years in high school, four years in college. And it wasn't until maybe my first or second year as a professional runner, so after college, that I really started to grasp that idea that faster is not better. So you're, it took me eight years. And, and I, you know, I studied the sport. I mean, I, I loved running. I mean, I read everything possible and, and took classes and everything. And it took me eight, nine years to, to get it through my head that running slower is better. So I don't expect it to happen overnight for, for runners that are just starting. Uh, but I try as hard as I can. Uh, to to drill in that that uh, that idea that running faster is not better, and um, it doesn't always work, but I try. <laughs> yeah, and it goes. It's back to the efficiency thing, and we the the analogy here at Runkeeper. I mean, we're a startup, and it's it's just all all companies in general and business. It's how, how do we we're constantly trying to figure out how to work smarter, not harder. Right. It's, yep, exactly. We're not going to work uh, 14, 15 hour days is not sustainable. Um, right. You might do that when, when you need to or when there's a deadline, but you're, you're going to burn out and you're going to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. 